Hey everyone, this week saw former President Trump take to the stage at the Republican National Convention, where he was even introduced by former wrestling star Hulk Hogan, which made a change from last weekend, which almost saw an appearance by The Undertaker. This followed a week, of course, when the media tried to unpick the mess of what happened at the Trump rally, and the likes of CNN and the BBC realised that Trump is very likely to be in the White House for the next four years. Of course, for many people, he also lives rent-free in their head all the time, with ludicrous hyperbole being bandied around. If I counted the number of counterbalanced opinions I'd heard on the likes of Radio 4, you could do it on one hand. And that's even if your hand had been horribly injured in an industrial accident and you only had a couple of fingers. But anyway, in the meantime, conspiracy theorists from both sides have suggested a number of theories about what really happened from the deep state trying to assassinate him to Mr. Trump staging it all himself. Certainly, if it were all a TV show, then it would be getting fantastic ratings by now going into the season finale in November. Perhaps the final episode would have a plot twist where the Chinese start a war in Africa and Joe Biden demands that someone ask Nelson Mandela to do something. And then it's also revealed that he's unable to remember any of the launch codes. It is remarkable that having looked at the conspiracy evidence, you're left with the horrible realisation that one of only two things must be true. Either the Secret Service did plan it all, or they were just remarkably incompetent beyond anything that would be conceivably forgivable. Apparently the sniper's nest was never investigated, even when they were repeatedly warned about a weird gunman being up there, because the slope roof apparently posed a health and safety violation. After the attack, you see the agents struggling to get their guns out of their holsters. Many of them are overweight and unfit for the role. And there's a lot of talk about them simply being diversity hires and being put on the Trump team, rather than having to risk them being around the actual president when things matter. Perhaps that's true, and if so, I genuinely feel sorry for them being overpromoted to a role they're clearly incapable of doing and then being put on public display to be ridiculed when they mess up eventually. One of the more compelling arguments in favour of the conspiracy would be the money trail, though. Huge amounts of cash were placed in short-selling the Trump social shares the day before the incident, almost as if someone knew something was going to happen to him. And then there's all the timing of it all. If Trump had been successfully bumped off and with just two days to go to the Republican convention, senior people in the party could have done a deal behind closed doors and put pretty much anybody they wanted on the ticket. There's also an interesting case to be made about the lady with the sunglasses who sat behind Trump, filmed all the iPhone and has not come forward since. Many are claiming it's Janine DiGiuseppe, assistant director of the FBI, and the resemblance is pretty uncanny, I'm going to be honest. Or, on the other hand, perhaps the Secret Service are just another branch of the government, and as such are about as useless as you'd expect. If it takes months to renew a passport or get the city to approve a building permit, why would you expect a government team tasked with guarding Donald Trump from assailants to be any more competent? Anyway, see you next week. Like these, click subscribe.